I fought for a gold belt almost going to be 10 times in my career. I need no one. But if I want to fight Jones, I'll fight Jones. You see, it'll be my decision this time. How do you see this rematch with Mio Cheech? What's going to be different from the first one? Uh, I don't think anything's going to be different with Mio Cheech. I think uh, I have to approach it similar, but I do expect a better Stipe. I think he's going to... I, I know how hard it'll be to beat him again because I know how hard I prepared for the rematch with Jones. Because I was just like him. I was in his position before. And I know how motivated I was to try and right that wrong. So I expect a tougher fight. But um, he is he's a boxer and a wrestler. You know, that's exactly what he does. And and I I expect him to be better in his, his areas. But um, he'll be the same fighter, maybe just a little more aggressive. Is there back man? My back, I feel great now. I mean, I, I've, uh, I feel better than I did two years ago. Before, I, I'm walking around like this all the time. Now, I'm just up and moving, doing good. Then, what's the upside of uh, beating Stipe twice? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I think the upside to beating Stipe twice, I think it's just really hammering the point home that it, it was what it was supposed to be. Um, when the fight ends in the way that it did the first time, there's room for people to say, well, did he get lucky? Did this happen? Did this happen? I think um, ultimately this isn't for me. I'm, I'm doing this more because he deserves a rematch. You know, if I was like, I don't need to redo this again, I could have just went to someone else. But I did give him my word that if Brock didn't fight, I would fight him. So that's what I'm doing. Why not just retire? I mean, do you consider yourself the best of all time already? I do. But, um... It's not done yet. You know, I still have a desire to go out there and compete. If I would have got that fight on March 2nd, I'd be done. If I didn't have that injury, I'd probably be done. But um, I feel good, man. I, I, I think once I got from that back surgery and I was able to pop up in the morning again and feel good, I was like, well, I want to I wanna fight. You know, and I, I still have that desire to compete. The idea of you fighting at 205 again seems crazy to me. That's a dreadful wake, wake up for you. But, it would be a but horrible for wake up. Jones, that's, but that's for that would be the only reason I would do it. Yeah. I'm not going down to 205 just to fight anyone. It would only be if I was fighting Jones again. But why? Just do it at heavyweight. He beat me at 205, right? And um, well, you know, he's never fought at heavyweight. That would be something completely new for him. I'd, I'd want to fight on the terms that we fought prior. You talked about not needing to tie your career to John Jones anymore. Yet. I think it's inevitable. His name always comes up. Always yeah, when we're talking to you, it's always about John Jones in a way. And we've got we've seen all the stages with you. Like yeah. I don't want to hear about the guy anymore. I, now you want to fight him again. What is it about it and about him that you think that it's always just kind of gonna be there? I mean, I think when you have guys that have accomplished what we've accomplished, we will be tied together. You know, if we had fought just that one time and there was no drama and everything else, it would still be a lot of questions in regards to what we were to each other. Just because when you have two guys that have accomplished what we've accomplished, it's very difficult to separate us, especially with how closely we were tied. I mean, just the interactions between us were so volatile. Uh, the fights were good fights. You know, it's not like we were out there feeling each other out. We were fighting. So I think it's just it's just those things outside of all the personal animosity. Did you see a one-time training partner, Chai Lewis Perry, confront him today? I saw something today on my... Somebody sent me a text message, but I didn't open it. I, I don't know what happened. Uh, Chai, what happened? Chai Lewis went up to, uh, up to him at a, uh, something in England and said, why are you pretending not to be a dickhead? Really? Yeah. Yeah, Chai don't mess around, man. <laughs> I guess, I guess John's brothers taunted him last time he was with you. We, well, we were arguing one time before uh, UFC 200. We did like a big uh, sit-down interview, and then we started arguing outside. And then um, Chai was there. I don't, I don't know. I mean, usually when we're arguing and fighting like that, I see just him. So I don't even know who was there really. But uh, I guess his brothers were there, or maybe his brothers were before the fight or something. I don't, I don't know what it was, but. Yeah, Chai, Chai doesn't like. I mean, listen, man. It's when you have when you have when you have not just when you have consistent interactions with John Jones, you generally walk away with a dislike of John Jones. You don't really walk away with good feelings about him most times. So, uh, Chai had multiple interactions, and most of his interactions were honestly bad ones because he was with me, right? So it's not like he was meeting him on the street. Maybe people that, that know him from, from just walking the block think that he's a great guy. But when you're in the interactions like we have, you usually walk away with a pretty bad taste in your mouth. Yeah, I 
I talked to Misha Tate once uh, about, because her career was obviously very tied to a name, to Ronda Rousey, and she was saying that for all that happened, and we know that things got a little heated every now and then, she also said that great rivalries make for great narratives, and that she was actually pretty grateful that Ronda Rousey was part of her narrative. Are you, in a sense, grateful for Joan Jones in that it made things more interesting, perhaps, in that narrative? I mean, I, I've said this uh, on a number of occasions that when, we're, when I'm preparing to fight him, I train better, right? My focus is better, and I believe that when he beat me on those two nights, that was the best version of who I am. I, because I know how much work I put into being ready for that fight or those fights. So, um, yeah, I think it makes me better. You know, anytime you have a person like that to chase, it makes you better. I don't believe that I would have been as good a college wrestler if I didn't have Kale Sanderson. I don't know if my Olympic career would have been as well as good if I didn't have Gatsalov or Heydari, the Iranian. I think those guys that have accomplished so much that have kind of been out in front of me or would have made me as good as I've been for so long. Um, and speaking of the fight, last question, the fight that didn't happen with Brock Lesnar, you did mention that you think that maybe he would continue if the, the arrangements were correct. Yeah. Have you like gotten over completely the idea of fighting him or do you think there's still a chance that can happen? Well, my focus now is with Stipe Miocic, you know, like when they told me it was over, the Lesnar thing was over, I had to make sure the Lesnar thing was over in my mind so that I can prepare for the guy that's actually going to stand across the octagon. Because if I think about, oh, I'm so sad I didn't get to fight Brock Lesnar, Steve is going to knock my ass out. And I don't want Steve to knock my ass out. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to focus on Steve Bay Miocic. There was a talk that the, the Brock fight didn't happen because Brock wanted to, to get money up front now that the UFC changed the pay-per-view platform to ESPN. Uh, what are your PR, your plans about it? Do you plan on talking to, to, to the UFC to get a better deal? How about well, the thing about it is the UFC is uh, very open to working with the guys. You know, like, my, my, uh, what, what I have, what we have in place for to fight in Anaheim totally compensates for everything that the UFC has done for me.